Welcome to the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency's 3 T's Lead Sample Collection video. This video expands upon materials developed in support of EPA's 3 T's program to reduce lead in drinking water in schools and child care facilities through training, testing, and taking action. This video will show how you can identify sources of lead in drinking water at a school or child care facility. We will walk through, step by step, how to sample for lead throughout your facility to help keep your school or child care community safe and informed. For more details on each of the steps covered in this video, see the EPA 3T's Lead Sampling Field Guide at www.epa.gov slash safewater slash 3T's. Lead in drinking water most often results from corroded plumbing materials that contain lead. Children are most susceptible to the effects of lead because their bodies are still developing. Therefore, they tend to absorb more lead than adults. In children, lead exposure can cause adverse health effects both physical and behavioral, including impaired growth, reduced attention span, hyperactivity, and learning disabilities. There is no safe blood lead level for children. The best way to know if there is lead in drinking water is to test for it. That's where you can help. Step 1. Find a certified laboratory. If you are served by a water utility, they may test for lead in your drinking water upon request. Otherwise, contact a state-certified lab. The lab will either collect your drinking water samples for you, or send you the materials to collect them yourself and ship them back. If you need help finding a certified lab, the EPA 3T's Lead Sampling Field Guide can provide helpful direction and is located on the EPA 3T's website. Step 2. Prioritize your fixtures. Once you have found your state certified lab, you need to identify what fixtures you want to sample, prioritizing ones that are actively used for drinking and cooking. A fixture can include drinking water fountains, kitchen sinks, ice making machines, classroom combination sinks, nurse's office sinks, or any other sink known to be used for human consumption. Step 3. Create a coding system. To prepare for sample collection, develop an easy-to-read coding system to create individual sample IDs which can include the floor number, room number, outlet type or name, and a sample number. This will allow you to easily identify your specific sampling location and properly label your sample bottles so that the lab knows the exact fixtures the samples were taken from as well as the type of sampling that was conducted. The EPA 3T's Data E-Trackers, shown here, can assist with tracking and documenting sampling results and any actions you take if lead is detected. These can be accessed by visiting the EPA 3T's website. Step 4. Prepare for testing. The night before sampling, post signs around your school so that others do not use the water before or during your sampling time, and be sure to label your sample containers with the sample ID. You should also gather the following materials. A pencil, a notepad, a stopwatch, sample containers, your sampling form, disposable plastic gloves, and a labeled map of the plumbing system. Other optional items that may be helpful include hand wipes or bottled water to wash your hands with. This video will demonstrate the two types of samples a first draw sample, and a flush sample. A first draw sample collects water from the fixture and its parts, shown here in blue. These results will indicate if the fixture is a source of lead in your water. A flush sample collects water from further behind the fixture, shown here in orange. Samples are taken in predetermined lengths of time after the water has been flowing out of the fixture. These results will indicate if the pipes behind the fixtures are a source of lead in the water. A flush sample is normally collected if your first draw sample has lead levels at the fixture. However, flush samples may be taken the same day as the first draw samples to reduce costs. Step 5. Collect your sample. To conduct a first draw sample, water should be sitting in the pipes for at least 8 hours, but for no more than 18 hours prior to sampling. These samples are typically collected in the morning, before the facility opens and before the fixtures have been used. When taking a first draw sample, do not flush the fixture by running the water before collecting your sample. The first draw sample is collected immediately upon turning on the water. To do this, place the container under the fixture or faucet and then turn the water on. Fill the 250 milliliter container to the top, but do not allow the water to overflow. Secure the lid on the container and set it aside. Be sure to record any observations in your sampling form. For example, was the faucet leaking? Was there any water discoloration? Did you notice a change in water pressure? The flush sample is also collected in the morning before a facility opens and before any significant water is used. Using a stopwatch, let the water run steadily, commonly for 30 seconds. 
Then fill the 250 milliliter container to the top with water. Secure the lid on the container and prepare for shipping. Step 6. Pack and ship your materials. Once you have collected all of your samples, you should follow the instructions from the lab to pack and ship the samples as soon as possible. Waiting too long could lead to problems that require resampling. Ensure that your samples have been properly labeled and that they are securely packed in the shipping container. Most labs will require you to complete a chain of custody form to ensure the contents of your samples are safely received by the appropriate entity. This form will typically include the date, time, location, type, and ID of the samples you are sending to the lab. The last steps are to take action and communicate. If lead is detected in your samples, EPA recommends taking action. Action may include posting a sign at the fixture to inform that lead was found, installing filters, implementing routine flushing, or removing or replacing the fixtures. You should also reach out to your public water system and use the EPA 3T's Lead Sampling Field Guide to help you determine your short-term and or long-term actions you can take to reduce lead levels. The guide is located on the EPA 3T's website. When you receive your results, share them with your community, including parents, students, staff, and anyone else that might use the building. Use the customizable EPA 3T's letter template to share results and actions with your community. By watching this video, you've taken the first step in protecting children from lead exposure in drinking water. Now you are ready to begin the 3T steps of training, testing, and taking action. For more details on testing, please review the EPA 3T's Lead Sampling Field Guide and other resources on EPA's 3T's website. Thanks for watching.